Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Tuesday. Pretty large storm system on radar this morning hitting the, uh, the west here. You've got this axis, and here it is, of moisture. Everything's kind of along that line in north. So northern California, Idaho, Montana, parts of Washington, Oregon, seeing precipitation, rain, and snow. Now eventually, this whole axis of moisture will start to very slowly sink to the south over the next 24 hours. Believe it or not, what you see here in northern California will take a full 24 hours to make it into Tahoe and area south. That's how slow that thing is going to be sinking to the south. Now, eventually, we're going to have snow in the parts of Wyoming, probably brushing the Wasatch and extreme northern Colorado as well. It's just going to take some time for this thing to work its way through. Here's water vapor satellite imagery this morning. So remember, the whites and the blues are the moisture. That's where the action is on this. And you can see this is a serious area of low pressure um, sitting out over the Pacific. Lots of spin. Here's your moisture uh, axis or conveyor belt right here. And again, it's just north of Tahoe and northern California, Idaho, Montana. Eventually, again, it's going to be sinking to the south just a little bit, digging to the south over the next uh, 24 hours. But that's a pretty impressive area of low pressure. Here are my bullet points this morning. So California storm eventually will hit Tahoe on 11.5 with snow levels pretty high, 9,000 to 9,500 feet, which precludes a lot of areas. It's going to be very windy as well with 90 mile an hour wind gusts. So we'll see snow all the way down through Tahoe and across a lot of the high Sierra. I'll show you that uh, snow forecast in a second. Now, this will send additional moisture through the interior, clipping northern Utah, clipping parts of uh, northern Colorado. Um, and there may be actually a couple of waves that come through with this storm system. Then we're going to see a big area of high pressure move into the west, 11, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So uh, a really dry, much warmer stretch right there. And then potentially after that, we could see an active pattern settle in. Here are the best odds of snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Interior, BC. So I've been talking about Tahoe. Your best shot of precip is on 11.5 and then again 11, 12, 13, and 14. In Idaho, you're getting precip today. You'll get some additional uh, tomorrow afternoon into the 6th and 7th. And then again, quite an extended period between late 11.12 and 11.16. So we've got some pretty good snow drilling down on that on just a few locations. So Alta, you might see an inch as a, as a wave of that breaks loose and moves in. Uh, late 11.5 into 11.6, so we're going to have to wait on it. And then another inch on 11.7. And then bigger snow potential uh, later in, in the forecast period, 11, 13, 14, 15, and beyond. Looking at Mount Baker, you've got big snow coming, 11, 5, 11, 6, 11, 7, higher up on Baker. This is not at the base area. Um, and then again, a little bit, 9, 10, more, 12, 13, 14, and then again, 11, 16. So you can see the potential here. There's definitely storm system storm systems in the uh, the forecast. Let me show you the forecast radar and we'll track this thing out. So roughly today at lunch is where we're going to start it. And you can see that axis of moisture right here. And again, it does finally move in to the Tetons, Yellowstone, and the Wind Rivers later today as sort of that axis just kind of shifts a little bit. All right, let me move this into the future. All right, here's the dinner hour. Now by tomorrow morning, it looks like that entire plume has moved out of the Tetons, and a lot of it's kind of fading. So this is this is early on Wednesday here, probably 5 a.m. Wednesday, November 5th. Everything is is back here now across the, the, the West Coast. And look at it. It's finally in the Tahoe at that point. It's taken that long to rotate in. There's the lunch hour on Wednesday. And then look what happens here. Dinner hour. Um, sends a wave in, so another wave for the Tetons and some for the northern mountains of Utah at that point as well. All right, there's, uh, let's see, midnight, there's early on Thursday, November 6th. So this is probably 5 a.m. on Thursday. Little bit of moisture right there in the northern mountains of Colorado. Some leftover moisture, Tetons, Wind Rivers, Wasatch, High Uintas. Let's see what the lunch hour looks like. 
at the lunch hour, just a little bit of leftover moisture in Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah, kind of drying up at that point, but you still got moisture across the West Coast. All right, here's a late, there's a dinner hour on Thursday. All right, there are the, there's the early morning hours right there of Friday, November 7th. So this is probably 5 a.m. on Friday, November 7th, a whole new wave of moisture breaking loose and moving into the interior. Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and eventually that should brush uh, parts of the central and northern mountains of Colorado on its way through. And again, that's early on uh, Friday the 7th. All right, let's check out the atmosphere. Um, so atmospheric pressure anomalies, you're looking at highs and lows. This is today effectively a big area of high pressure sitting across a lot of the inner mountain. There's your action off uh, the west coast. All right, this is Thursday, 11 6. Uh, a drop in pressures over Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, northern Utah, northern Colorado as that moisture rotates through on 11 6. This is uh, further down the road, but this is 11 13. This is after we get through that interim high pressure, 11 9, 10, 11 12. Then it looks like a pretty big drop in pressures across the west. If this verifies 11 13, looking at colder temperatures with more widespread snow across the west. All right, let's, okay, this is kind of cool. This is your integrated vapor transport. This is effective central California coast. This is that storm system that's late four into five into early six. It does bring a little bit of atmospheric river moisture with it. You can see the spike there. So a moderate to strong brief push of atmospheric river moisture. And so that should uh, produce, again, high winds and also a, a brief concentrated area of moisture. All right, total moisture across the west here in the northwest. So this is as if everything fell as rain. Notice at the beginning, there's your axis. Um, and then as we move into time, there are some uh, pieces of that moisture that move into the interior. This is as if, again, everything fell as rain over the next 10 days. Some pretty significant moisture up the west coast. And even up here around uh, parts of Wyoming, central to northern Idaho and northwest Montana, some decent precip. I mean, that's two to five inches of liquid. How does that actually look as snow? Here's your 10-day snow forecast. Notice it comes in waves. So at the beginning, everything's kind of focused uh, up to the northwest. And then there's that lull, and then after about the 12th or the 13th, we start to see the snow accumulation pick up again. Anywhere in purple or pink is over six inches. And there are a lot of places over six inches. The Sierra, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, and certainly the Pacific Northwest, BC, interior BC. Let's look at, uh, let's zoom in on this as a static image. So 10 day snow forecast in the Sierra. So this accounts for at least two storm systems. Again, anything pink, purple is over six, and this is, you know, this is easily a foot or more in the high Sierra with these bright colors. So you're looking at a foot or more. Uh, over the next 10 days there. Let's go into the interior Rockies, into Wyoming, a little bit of Montana, Utah, Colorado. This is, this is easily 8 to 14 inches up there and those bright pinks. You can see it uh, as it corresponds over here onto the, uh, the legend. Now in Utah, this is looking like 6 to 12 in the Wasatch, probably 6 to maybe 12 or 14 in the High Uintas. In Colorado, definitely some pockets of 6 plus here. That accounts for probably two or three different waves, and it looks like easily six plus up here in southwest Montana as well. One more map. Let's go into Colorado. Ten days total snow. Again, definitely some pockets of at least six, maybe up to ten here in some places. Not all from one storm. That's easily two or three different waves that move through over the next 10 days. All right, looking at the snow plumes. Actually, you know what? Let's look at the northeast animation here. So one, two, three different waves over the next 10 days. And right there, even a little bit of lake effect. This is indicating. So maybe around the 9th, 10th, somewhere in there, you might get a little bit of lake effect 
Um, that could be very interesting. All right, let's look, uh, let's drill down on that just a little bit. So here's Mount Washington. The ensemble actually generates about a foot of snow here by November 19th, or maybe even the 18th. But again, it doesn't all come at one time, accumulates over time. That's on the top of Mount Washington. Um, down at Jay Peak, about 10 inches by November 19th. Some of the air bars are up over a foot. Jay Peak. Jackson, Wyoming, looking really good, especially here late in the period. A pretty steep accumulation here. Some of the air bars are up around two feet, but this generates about 16 inches through November 19th. Pretty slow in the interim. There's a definitely a high and dry period, and boy, you can really see that in Berthet Pass. Let me clear that. It is, it's pretty low, low season here. Low tide until we get to uh, potentially 13, 14, 15, you can see the bending and acceleration of the, the snow, but this doesn't really accumulate that much, even over Birth at Pass, maybe seven, seven and a half inches by November 19th. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.